Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a simple linear regression in SPSS. So in the case of a simple linear regression, we have one independent variable and one dependent variable. And a simple linear regression will determine how much variance in the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. If you have more than one independent variable, you would use a multiple linear regression. And if you have an independent variable that you want to control for, you would use a hierarchical multiple regression. And I have separate videos to cover those topics. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view, I have one independent variable or predictor variable and one dependent variable or outcome variable. And the independent variable is coping skills and the dependent variable is overall functioning. So in this case we want to determine how much variance in overall functioning is explained by coping skills. There are several assumptions to keep in mind with simple linear regression. You need independence of observations. You want at least 20 records for each independent variable if the dependent variable is normally distributed. In this case I have 100 records and I'm going to check to see if the dependent variable is normally distributed and I'm going to check to see if the independent variable is normally distributed as well. You cannot have outliers in either of the variables, either the predictor variable or the outcome variable. You want there to be a linear relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. And we also want to check that the predictor variable correlates strongly enough with the outcome variable and that's something we'll check through the process of running the simple linear regression. So before I get started with that process, I'm going to check the normality of coping skills and overall functioning. So I'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore, and I'm going to move coping skills and overall functioning into uh, both into the dependent list here. And then I'm going to make no changes under Statistics. And under plots, I'm going to uh, uncheck stem and leaf, check off histogram, and then check off normality plots with tests. And there'll be no changes here under options. Click OK. And this will check to see if these variables are normally distributed. And the statistic of interest here is the Shapiro-Wilk. So you can see we have the descriptives and then the test of normality and the results for Shapiro-Wilk here for both coping skills and overall functioning. We have a non-statistically significant result for both, which means we'll assume that both of these variables are normally distributed. If we had statistical significance, a value of 0.05 or lower, we would reject the null hypothesis that the variables are normally distributed. So moving back to the data view, although we can run statistics directly from the output view if we wanted to, I'm going to go to Analyze, and Regression, and then Linear. Now this is a simple linear regression, so we'll put overall functioning in the dependent variable list box and coping skills in the independent variable list box. Under statistics, I'm going to add uh, R squared change, descriptives, part and partial correlations, and collinearity diagnostics, as well as case wise diagnostics. Model fit and estimates are checked off by default. Under plots, we want to plot the standardized residuals against the standardized predicted values. So under, in the y-axis here, we're going to use ZRISID, so the standardized residuals. 
For the x-axis, we're going to use the standardized predicted values, which is Z, P, R, E, D. And I'm going to add the normal probability plot. Click Continue. Under Save, I'm going to leave everything as it is by default, except I'm going to add Cook's distance by checking that off and continue. Under options, I'm going to make no changes and no changes under style. So this simple linear regression is ready to run. I'll click OK. And we can see the output starts with the descriptive statistics. We have the mean and standard deviation of the overall functioning variable, which is the outcome variable, and coping skills, which is the predictor variable. Looking at the correlation between these two variables, we want that to be greater than 0.3. It's 0.786. So we're in good shape there. I'm going to move down more toward the end of the output here to the charts. So looking at the normal probability, probability plot of regression standardized residual, we want these points to be close to or on this line. And you can see for the most part they are uh, close to the line, if not on the line. And then for the scatter plot, you can see on the y-axis we have the standardized residual and then the standardized predicted value on the x-axis. And we want this to look more or less rectangular uh, as it does here. And we want no value to be lower than negative 3 or higher than 3. And we are within those bounds here. Moving up to the residual statistics, we want to take a look at the standard residual, minimum, and maximum. And we want this to be within negative 3 to 3. And we have that here. And then Cook's distance, we don't want the maximum to be greater than 1. And the maximum here is 0 0.093. So we're in good shape there. Moving up to the ANOVA table. This ANOVA tests the null hypothesis that the slope of the line is 0. We want to reject that null hypothesis. So we have that here with this p-value of 0 0.000, which we would normally just report as p is less than 0 0.001. Of course, that is statistically significant. And then we go to interpret the model summary. And we can see the r value, of course, this is the same as the correlation. We just have the one predictor variable. Then r square is 0.617. If you have a small sample size, you would interpret the adjusted r square. So in this case, I'm going to interpret r square. So 0.617, what that means is that 61.7% of the variance in the dependent variable, overall functioning, is explained by the independent variable coping skills. And we can see that is statistically significant. The minimum r square value that we would like to see here is 30% or 0.3. So we would say that in this instance with a value of 0.617, coping skills significantly predict overall functioning as we have measured both variables by explaining 61.7% of the variance. I hope you found this video in conducting a simple linear regression to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.